My mom, 37 female, and I were extremely close. She used to say that I was her joy and pride. My male nearly adult birthday is tomorrow, and I've decided that I no longer want to go to her house to visit her and her real family. Some context. My mom had an affair when I was nine. She left my dad because she fell in love with a married man, and the man ended up divorcing his wife and moving in with my mom. My dad had custody of me, and my mom was awarded custody of me on weekends. She seemed happy to have me and always treated me well. Her husband treated me well too, though sometimes he tried to make me respect him as a dad. As my mom's husband's ex-wife wanted nothing to do with the three kids they had, 18 male, nearly adult female, tween male, my mom started spending more time with them because her husband had full custody. She sometimes acted more like a mother to them than to me. She would pick them up from school. She never did that for me, and she celebrated their birthdays while she was just a guest at mine. It was hard because I felt like I was gradually losing my mom. During her custodial, she was great, but she never tried beyond the minimum when it wasn't her time. I had a swimming competition in 2019 at school, but she didn't show up because it was on Wednesday and her stepdaughter had an activity at school. She tried to compensate for it later, but the scar was left there. It isn't healthy for me to be at her house. I suffer a lot when I'm there because they get to have my mom 100% and I only have weekends. They also have a young son. It sucks seeing them play the happy family. And even if her husband treated me well, I see nothing but the man who destroyed my home and hurt my dad. This last weekend, I went to her house and told her that it's not healthy for me to be at her house because it hurts me to see her that happy and I'm not. I also talked about the time she missed events because it wasn't her custodial time. So I told her I was never coming back. I also said that as long as she's in this family, we can't have a relationship because I'm afraid they'll make her choose and she'll pick them over me like other times and I'll be hurt again. She started crying and said it wasn't the message she was trying to send. She said she never meant to make me feel cast aside and that she was picking them over me. She said I couldn't do that because I'm her baby but I told her that this wasn't her choice. She's called me every day saying that she hasn't been capable of sleeping and wants to see me to talk. Her husband and kids call me the idiot for making her feel guilty for something unintentional. But I made my choice and my dad has my back. Even if you sometimes need the fire, you've got to keep your distance for your safety and not get burned. Not the idiot. She made her choice repeatedly to pick her stepchildren over you you cannot control what others do, but you can't manage your response to those actions. All the best. I have no time for cheats, so I have less than zero sympathy for your mother and her new husband. And ironically, while stepchildren's mother gets criticized for dumping her children, OP's mother turns around and does the same thing to him, just not as blatantly. Plus, it's very telling that she's not trying to get her husband and stepchildren to back off from harassing OP. She's only crying now for herself, not for OP. She's concerned about her sleep, sadness, and pain, not OP's. Her tears mean nothing. It must have really sucked to see the mom go all the way and work to get amazing birthday celebrations for the stepchildren, but not doing the same for OP. Nor that she was ever there to witness OP's achievements. Did she never realize how shunned you'd feel if she didn't attend so many of your life events? She seems pretty selfish, cheating on your dad. Then the way she treats her stepkids, ugh. When in doubt, pay attention to her actions, not her words. She talks a good game, but her years of treating you like her last priority have caught up with her. Don't let your mom or her family gaslight you into believing that you're wrong or that you must accept it. You have every right to feel that way. Reflecting on her failure as a mother and a wife, not on you or your dad. Kudos to you for putting yourself first. Your mom should be proud, as you probably learned that from her. I, 33 male, have been my brother's, 19, legal guardian since our mother died five years ago. He is severely autistic and will never be able to care for himself, so he also lives with me. My friend, 34 male, moved in with us temporarily after his divorce last month. He's looking for a place of his own. 
My brother gets along with my friend great. My friend doesn't contribute any money and is crashing on the couch, so he does the housework. The other day, my friend's kids, boys pre-tween, were spending the day at my place. It was his time with the kids. We were all watching a movie and my brother asked many questions throughout the movie. It upset his younger son who told my brother to just shut up at one point. I told him that's not a nice thing to say and my friend told me not to parent his son. So we kept watching the movie and when my brother asked, why did they kiss at some point? The kid said, because they're in love, you dork. My friend said nothing. After the kids left, I told my friend he had one day to get a new couch to crash on because I won't let his children talk to my brother like that and have him, friend, do nothing about it. My friend said I'm an idiot for kicking him out over some attitude his kid had once. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. He was a guest in your home and let his kids insult your brother. He's responsible for his children's behavior while they're visiting somewhere. And this isn't the sort of thing you should put up with or that he should have been allowing them to say without stepping in himself. You're perfectly justified in kicking him out over that. Plus, you're not kicking him out for what his kid said. You're kicking him out because he did not correct his son's behavior after telling you that you can't correct his son's behavior. The kid knew he was using an insult. That's why he said it the way he did. He was more than eager to shut OP down for parenting his kid, but less eager to parent his kid. If he's not correcting it, he's condoning it. I might have gotten a glimpse into why this bum is couch surfing in the first place. Everyone's the idiot here. You being protective of your brother, which is good. The kid had some attitude, but he wasn't verbally abusing your brother. Shut up and dork aren't bad terms and shouldn't warrant kicking out. This was a talk it out moment, not a nuclear moment. You are overreacting. Try to understand from a kid's perspective. You're constantly talking while everyone's trying to watch the movie and nobody's trying to quiet him or stop your brother. Of course the little kid's gonna get annoyed. My family is from Mexico, but I was born in the US. I'm the only one in my family who doesn't speak Spanish. All my extended family, grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, etc. speak it, but I never really cared for it that much. Katya, my girlfriend knows I'm Mexican and she asked if I spoke Spanish. But when I said no, she didn't push, which I found refreshing. Usually people ask a lot of questions. She never said she spoke Spanish, but I remember her watching something and hearing Spanish, but I figured she had subtitles on. If it's important, Kate is from Germany. Katya and I have been together for three months. It's not long, but it's been intense. My grandmother had a birthday on Saturday and my family threw her a huge party. I invited Katya to come along with me as it would be the perfect time to meet my family and they're always very welcoming. Katya agreed. When we got there, everyone switched to English to speak to Kate, but they quickly went back to Spanish. So I went to grab a beer and returned to find Katya talking to my aunt in Spanish. So I came over and played it cool, telling her I didn't know she spoke it, yada yada. When Katya was with me, she spoke English, but whenever she spoke to one of my family members alone, she switched because they switched. It made me uncomfortable especially since it wasn't your typical barely spoken Spanish. It was full-on fluent Spanish, and she understood my fast-speaking relatives. So I got really annoyed with her but said nothing. My grandma told me how much she loved Katya and how she was happy I found such a fantastic girl. All my family loved her. They couldn't stop singing praises about her. On our way back, I got really angry with her. And when we got to my apartment, I told her that I felt betrayed that she hid she spoke Spanish and how she made a fool of me. I admit I was shouting because I was angry. I felt humiliated. She asked me to calm down and told me she never hid anything. I accused her of sneakily making her way into my family instead of having them warm up gradually. She asked if I was being serious and I confirmed. She called me a jerk and left my apartment. I was too angry to stop her. I'm waiting for her to call me with apologies, but she hasn't been in touch since Saturday night. I told my brother about it, and he told me I was the fool, but I really felt disrespected by Katya. Am I the idiot for getting angry and shouting she hid that she spoke my language? You are the idiot. 
Forget the language aspect of which you never actually asked, but accusing her of sneakily making her way into your family? What does that even mean? If you truly like her, you should be happy that they do too. Instead, you're projecting your personal family issues onto her, and it may make you lose the relationship. That line got me, but what sent me over the edge was him, saying he was sitting at home waiting for her to apologize to him. I burst with laughter when I read that and had to compose myself before I could write this comment. OP, you are so ridiculous if you think you're owed an apology. You actually owe her an apology for the way you treated her. Listen to your brother because you're really coming off as a complete fool right now. You need to pull your head out of your butt and fix the mess you've made of your relationship, if you even have one anymore. It sounds to me like you're more jealous that she can speak Spanish. Maybe dig into your insecurities before getting upset with your girlfriend over being bilingual. She asked you if you spoke Spanish and you don't, so she didn't have to speak it around you. If I were you, I'd be more than thrilled that she was able to communicate with your family in what I'm assuming is a lot of their first language. She wasn't hiding this big secret or doing it to be malicious or hurt you. Agreed. Gosh, I hope she isn't hiding anything else. What if she's an excellent cook or great with animals? She better not be kind to strangers. Urgh. Get your priorities straight, cabron. My husband and I just argued about me cleaning on Saturdays. I choose Saturdays to run all my errands and clean the house. During that time, I asked him to take care of our toddler so I could continuously clean without having to stop every 30 seconds to help her out. Well, today I ran my errands and took her with me. I've also been cleaning while she ran around, and I helped her. Then I got frustrated with her walking on the floors where I had just mopped. I asked her to stop. She said no. I like walking on the wet floor. So I snapped at her to stop. My husband finally decided to get off the couch and take her to the park. As he was leaving, he told me that I chose today of all days to clean when he has a day off to spend time together as a family that I was selfish for taking one of my two days off work to clean and that I needed to clean on a day that he's working. Mind you, he works Wednesday through Friday and then Wednesday to Saturday every other week. This week, he didn't have to work Saturday. He works 12-hour days. I work five days a week and eight-hour days. I can't clean before I go to work because he's sleeping or I'm getting myself and my daughter ready to go to work. I take my daughter to work with me. During the week, I wake up at 7 to start making breakfast. I get my daughter up to eat, and while she's eating, I shower and get dressed. I cook dinner, we eat as a family, bathe my daughter, and put her to bed. I clean up from dinner, take care of the dogs, clean up any mess my daughter's made. I take Saturdays to deep clean the house and do laundry. He doesn't see the point in deep cleaning, and then Sundays are a day of rest so I can regenerate for the coming week. Now, here's where I get angry. While I'm at work on Monday and Tuesday, my husband is sitting on the couch, sleeping, or playing his video games. Saturday, he spends yelling at me for deep cleaning, and Sunday, he's at a friend's house gaming. But I'm choosing one of two days off to deep clean, and he has to take my daughter to the park or keep her entertained while I clean. On one of his four days off of work, I ask him to take care of our kid. The other three are his, but I'm bad for cleaning on Saturdays and wanting to rest on Sundays, which wouldn't even be resting. The only thing different is I don't go to work. I just stay home and play with my daughter. You know you aren't the bad guy. You don't have a partner. You have two children. He's not going to change. This is your life. Think about that. Would you be happy for your daughter if she ended up in a relationship like yours? She will because it's what she sees and you allow it. Agree. Your husband sounds like a child. Your husband should be helping out with the cleaning on his days off. If he helped with cleaning on his days off during the week, there would be less to clean on the weekends. By the way, if he gets to game with friends one time a week, when do you enjoy your life? So, he has a day off to spend together as a family, and he's mad he has to get off the couch and take the kid to the park? What is that if not spending time with his family? He's an adult in this house. He should be looking after the kid while you clean in the morning and then doing his chores while you look after the kid in the afternoon. He can do hang with his friends and game on one of the day's kiddos at daycare. Parenting involves sacrifices. Sorry, my dude. 
And let's be honest, he doesn't want Saturday for family time. He wants you to continue caring for your daughter on your own so he doesn't have to bother and can relax. That's what he thinks you all do as a family. You should leave if he can't get it together to clean and parent for his share. You already do everything alone anyway. I, 36 female, had to take my child, tween, to camp last week. We left on a Friday and returned home this last Friday. My husband, 38, could not get the time off of work, so he stayed home. This is not new for us. Typically, we switch years or which parents take time off to go. However, this is our last year. We must have a parent attend. Before I left, I cleaned the house, made a few freezer meals. I don't trust him in the kitchen as he can't cook to save his life. Not a problem for me. And generally just wanted to make things easier as he was going to pick up a lot of overtime while we were gone. No big deal. And yes, he normally takes on 50% of the chores. The only thing extra he had to do was water my garden and send a package out for me. Well, we went to camp. It was a blast, but I was so ready to be home after. When we got home Friday evening, I couldn't believe my eyes. The house was a wreck. I honestly don't know how it got to that level in a week. He hadn't done a single thing while we were gone. My garden hadn't been watered. The package hadn't been sent. And the living room and kitchen looked like a hurricane had gone through. I was mad and packed our child and made some clean clothes and checked into a hotel. When husband got home, he messaged, asking where we were. I told him a hotel and that we were staying until the house was back to how I left it. He complained, saying it wasn't that bad and he needed help to clean half of it because that was our job. I told him I didn't make half the mess, so I wasn't cleaning it. It quickly devolved into a huge fight where he thought I was the idiot for not doing my half of the chores when I got home. Am I the idiot here? Not the idiot. If you both do 50% of the chores, then how did he trash 100% of the house in one week? For him to trash the place in your absence and still expected you to do half the work to clean it, major entitlement issues on his part. And for him to say cleaners are a waste of money, he comes across as someone who thinks domestic duties are beneath him. Can't cook, won't clean, won't pay a cleaner, and expects you to clean his mess? He needs to grow up. Weaponized incompetence. Who refuses to clean their own home? Their child's actual house? Are you sure you weren't married to three raccoons in a trench coat? Honestly, he did it on purpose because you would do it. It sounds to me like perhaps you do more than you realize. If he's pretending he can't see muck and filth, and admit he's been neglectful and lazy. That sounds too close to weaponized incompetence and like he thinks guilting you into cleaning up after him is normal. Agree, this sounds completely intentional. It sounds like he's just assumed you went off to play at camp, so he decided to be a slob and force you to clean it when you got back. He's showing no respect for you, your son, or the house. They're not your half if you weren't there to make the mess. Like, geez. It's not that hard to throw trash in the trash can.